Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide as I squint at the camera through this glorious spring sunlight. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today I'm going to answer a question from a viewer and this question comes from Kevin and this is what he seeks support with. Um, if you could spare a moment to offer some advice, I would greatly appreciate it. I am 55 years old and returning to university to achieve my PhD. Obviously, I am much older than the other students and have been away from academia for quite some time. I admit I am feeling quite awkward about my age. However, I want to dress in attire that is appropriate for my age. I want to dress upwardly casual and make a great impression on my professors while not emphasizing the age gap between me and the other students. Do you think it would be appropriate for me to wear a nice sports jacket, dress shirt, dress pants and dress shoes and a nice watch to class? I believe that a fundamental purpose of university is to teach an individual how to be a professional and if one aspires to be a professional one should dress like a professional. All the best from Kevin in Ontario, Canada. P.S. Cary Grant is my fashion role model. Well, Kevin, you have a fabulous role model there. If only men today dressed in the same style as the great Cary Grant, Archibald Leach from Bristol, not only 20 odd miles away from where I'm sitting here recording this, um, we would all be in a far better place. Sadly, we've drifted somewhat. And that's something you're going to have to address uh, is when you're in a room full of much younger people, whose styles are diversely different from your own. You know, it's hard to countenance then dressing very well. Uh, and many of us, you know, come to terms with that in different ways. I'm gonna give you some advice today because I understand your predicament. You're returning to education and you're going to be sat in a room where most of the people will probably be a few decades younger than you. It's likely your professors will either be the same age or a little younger than you also. So I can understand your point about not wishing to seek overdressed, but also seeking to cut your own path and to make sure that you look smart in the most professional way. And I think that is admirable that you're already thinking about that. So let me give you some tips. Okay, Kevin, so you're suggesting, you know, taking a pretty traditional conservative approach, a sports jacket, a shirt with a collar, dress slacks, dress shoes, and so on. Let's talk about those things individually. Let's talk about your footwear for a start. Because in a university environment, I'm gonna guess, I never went to university, but I'm gonna guess that the majority of people, their habitual attire is going to be what we would consider to be on the bottom end of formality, the very casual end. I mean, I'm gonna guess, and I hope I'm not doing a disjustice to people uh, in that sort of walk of life, but I'm gonna guess that we're talking athleisure wear, you know, jogging clothes and things like that, and kind of very casual. So your, the contrast between yourself and them is what you've got to cope with. So when we're talking about footwear, for instance, I'm going to guess that everybody else is going to be wearing sneakers, training shoes, you know, whatever is the more comfortable, which people choose to wear these days. So I'm going to suggest that highly polished dress shoes, whilst they're my choice of wear pretty much every day, they're maybe going to be a little incongruous to the group that you're going to find yourself sitting amongst, your contemporaries. So perhaps we need to step down the level of formality a little, yet still maintaining traditional uh, standards, which you know anybody would recognize as being an intentionally well-dressed man. So instead of the dress shoe, I'm going to suggest that a chucker boot may be the route to take. Maybe something with a grained leather, you know, which in, the, in such a situation will not require a high shine, a polish. It'll fit perhaps or sit more comfortably with the contrast between yourself and your contemporaries. Uh, maybe uh, a desert boot would be an excellent choice because they come in suede, they come in leather also, uh, but they have this wonderful capacity of straddling the worlds of formality and informality because, you know, a desert um, a, a suede desert boot is something which can be worn easily with chino trousers, but also can be easily worn with jeans, can be easily worn even with shorts. It's a magnificent sort of uh, level sitter, really. You can wear it in different areas. So that's something I would very much suggest. Um, you know, or maybe if you're inclined to do so, 
you see these hybrid sneaker shoes these days that again straddles the lines of formality and informality i particularly i mean i i don't own a pair i'm thinking about buying a pair these days but um these sort of leather sneakers which have more of a traditional brown leather color um, i've been looking at a pair from thursday boots uh, which are quite attractive quite modestly priced as well i quite like some of the colors and the variations which they do i think they could be worn with chinos again could be could be worn with denim jeans so if you're looking to sort of fit in and still look age appropriate that might be a route you want to take but i would certainly steer away from highly polished dress shoes unless you want to look like the principal of the university rather than a student now when it comes to moving up the body and one's trousers i'm going to take a guess here again that most common clothing worn by one's fellow students is going to be jogging trousers athleisure as we call it these days uh, or jeans and that's fine you know it's it's what people wore it, it's what i wore when i was in my sort of teens and 20s but as we grow we tend to gravitate more towards something a little more stylish and for a gentleman perhaps in his mid 50s and i i'm with you in that category myself um, i would suggest that maybe the route to take opposed to you know flannel slacks and maybe more formal dress trousers with a you know a good crease down the front of them will be much more stylish than jeans but still openly wearable and that's things like uh, chinos because chinos come in all different colors so they allow an element of self-expression they don't have to be ironed so they uh, you know or certainly they don't have to have a crease ironed down the front like flannel slacks for instance so they allow you to again straddle the line of looking smart and highly presentable yet still at a push being fairly casual as well because they are considered to be something of a casual trouser so that's the route i would take but remember you don't have to look a slob just because you're choosing a less formal trouser so if you have got a pair of chinos remember take them to the tailor make sure they fit properly make sure they've got the right break in the length make sure that they fit you in the hips and in the other parts of the body don't think that because you're entering into a relationship with a with a less formal pair of trousers you can't have them altered and don't discount denim totally all right i see many men of our age wearing dark denim so indigo navy denim which uh you know is much more uh, tasteful for an older gentleman i think again make sure that it's been tailored to fit you get the right length get the right fitting don't have sort of great big baggy ones hanging off you just because they're jeans and you don't want to have them tailored take them to the seamstress get them tailored they're going to look almost as presentable as a pair of trousers and certainly it'll look more in keeping with your your fellow students who will undoubtedly be wearing jeans as will you you're just wearing some which are several tiers up the hierarchy of the intentionally well-dressed man now when it comes to the upper body um, you've suggested wearing a sports jacket that's absolutely fine i choose to wear sports jackets almost all of the time tweed jacket today woolen jackets linen jackets in the summer they're fine i think they really delineate these days in society between the well-dressed man and the individual who just wears jeans and you know the the common t-shirt and i'm going to guess that your contemporaries your students in your class there i'm picturing them as in their 20s if they're also phd candidates um maybe a little older but they will be wearing t-shirts they'll be wearing jeans so again it's the contrast i would suggest next to the skin avoiding the t-shirt men in our 50s gravity is not our friend all right even if we're in good shape we look after ourselves as i try to do you know we don't look the same as we did when we were 20 when the pertness of youth showed in its vigor upon our bodies now in our mid 50s we want to wear uh, clothing which is complementary to our shape and not showing it up as the aging process is visibly displayed so i would avoid t-shirts i would avoid shirts in fact which don't have a collar because nobody wants to see the scraggly neck of an older man all right i avoid that myself i would suggest a button down collared shirt would be my day-to-day -day standard because that is classic it's elegant you can choose them in solid colors you can choose them with patterns but they're going to be much more complementary to one's physique unless you're in 
you know, an athletic individual and you're in fantastic condition in your, ex in your fit in your mid-50s, certainly, uh, you know, we want to work with clothing which is going to make us look our best. Button-down collar shirts strike a nice balance between formal and informal. Don't forget, it's a warm day, you're not wearing your jacket, you can roll the sleeves up and it looks highly appropriate with a button-down collar shirt because of that sort of informal approach to it. If it's uh, you know, a really informal situation, um, a polo shirt. Again, polo shirt has many of the negativities that a t-shirt holds in so much as it does cling somewhat to the body and it shows off the contours maybe that you don't want people to see, particularly around the, the, the gut. But um, just think carefully about what you're wearing and how it will uh, present you to the people around you. We don't want to look like an older man who's trying to dress young. It's far better to adopt a timeless classical style and then others will aspire to look like us rather than us trying to look like them. So avoid clinging clothes, clothes which don't have any features on them which throw all the emphasis on the body. Button down collar shirt or a polo shirt in the heat of the summer and you're steering in a good collection. Now uh, uh, for a jacket I see nothing wrong with a sports jacket as long as it's timeless in style, all right? We don't want to perhaps be wearing uh, certain types of maybe herringbone tweed and things like that because it certainly is aging. It's something classically elegant, I absolutely agree, but it is something which one traditionally thinks of being worn by maybe a university lecturer. And if you don't want to be mistaken for that individual, you can dress a little bit more contemporary in style. So maybe a jacket with a bit of a pattern on it, which is a little bit more modernist. Uh, alternatively to the sports jacket, another route you can take is the Harrington style jacket. Now these have been around, you know, since the 1950s. They are very much, again, straddling the world of formal and informal. They're they are informal really, they're a golfing jacket by design, but they look so good for sort of casuality as well. So if you're, you know, sat in a room, everybody's wearing hoodies or, you know, sweats and things like that, sweat clothes, um, a Harrington jacket will certainly uh, show the delineation between your style and theirs, but it won't look as if you've overdressed. So the Harrington jacket for me is a great little garment to sort of slot into that area between, you know, the sports jacket and the very casual. And don't forget knitwear, all right? So knitwear really is something which is underappreciated, I think. A cardigan can be worn in those shoulder months of spring and autumn as an outer garment, yet it's still classic, elegant, beautiful, very practical as well. So don't forget the cardigan. You know, don't discount knitwear as an outer garment uh, to keep you warm, but also to signal that you're not the guy wearing a sweatshirt, you're the guy wearing a nice knitted sweater or a cardigan. It makes a big difference. And your outerwear, it extends to that too. So, you know, in the modern era, I guess everybody wears anoraks of some kind or, or performance technical clothing, but the intentionally well-dressed man, well, he knows different. Yes, we do wear those clothes when we're climbing the north face of Everest, but in day-to-day -day life, wearing these elite performance clothing, uh, it's a bit of an overkill. So in my day-to-day -day life, you know, in the winter time, I'm opting for a pea coat. It's a great, again, straddler. You know, the overcoat may be perceived to be very formal. Uh, it might be intimidating if you're around younger people who are not dressing like that. They see a man wearing an overcoat. They're so uncommonly seen in the modern era it, that the contrast between you and them is never going to be more stark. But the pea coat, something which is cool and trendy. James Bond wears it. It's something which you can easily press into service with a pair of jeans or a suit. It's lovely and warm. It's got a history. If anybody asks about it, you know, its origins are within the Navy, keeping sailors warm. And uh, I think that the pea coat is like the modern day overcoat of choice for most men. And it's a great selection if you want to show that you're classically elegant and timeless in style, yet still connected with the modern world, whilst remaining incredibly practical in its use as well. So in summary, Kevin, I think that, you know, with some thought, regardless of age, you can dress with style and panache and elegance, even when sat in a room with much younger people who are much more fashion-driven than the classically elegant 
older gentleman who knows that timeless style is the way to attire himself because he's always going to be in fashion, whereas these young folks, the clothes that they buy today, they're going to be obsolete in a year's time because everybody's moved on to the next trend. So you've got the opportunity here to educate people, to become a style leader. Undoubtedly, people are going to say to you time and time again, wow, you're well-dressed, you're smart and presentable. This is the opportunity to answer those questions with, well, you know, I, the reason I dress like this is because I'm showing respect to the educator who are passing the information to us, you, my fellow students, so on and so forth. And before you know it, people will start to increase their style consciousness because they see you leading the pack. And as I've said so many times before, if you find yourself in a position to be a style leader, not a fashion follower, it's a privilege. And it's our job on our journey to Chap Nirvana to take people along with us as pilgrims too. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed that, Kevin. I hope it is of some use and your new period in education, achieving that PhD will be stylish as well as educationally fulfilling. So until the next time, take care. Don't forget, if you like this video, thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe. You can drop a comment into the comment section below. You can even support the channel by buying us a coffee or becoming a patron where I give extra videos for my patrons whose names you will see at the end. And the links to all of that are in the show notes below. So take care, wear your clothes in timeless style, and I will see you again very soon.